So today I want to talk about the automation of payroll, automation of uh, payroll. So you are talking about automation, automation of a payroll, automation of payroll. So when you talk of automation of payroll, you are talking about Excel, using Excel to do what? To automate, using Excel to, to automate. So once you automate your payroll, you will uh, reduce the time wastage, the time wastage uh, going to the website, going to the website, searching for the website, which they can't calculate for you, the pay, the NSSF, the SHAR, and also housing levy. Don't forget that the government has introduced the tax amendment, the tax amendment, the tax amendment, which uh, this tax amendment this tax amendment will be effected or it has uh it will be effected this this month of this month of december this month of december this month of december so it will be effected this month of december and in this month of december So with the introduction of tax amendment, which is being evicted this month, we have already updated our payroll. So this is the section one of our payroll, which is the database. So you put all the data, payroll number, the first name, the last name, and then Excel will combine the two to get the full name. And then we have the, the type of employee, the carry pin, the ID number, the phone number, the account number, if it is there, also put it is necessary. The share number, NSSF number, and the basic pay. So this is what contained in the basic or the database. So you're going to feed all your employees' data here. So once you feed or you insert all the employees' data here, we move to the current worksheet or the current month where all these deductions will be calculated. So your payroll number will be auto-populated here the name, the basic, the gross, NSSF. So NSSF have used a formula. So they will going to calculate the NSSF from your gross pay. Also, they're going to calculate the housing levy from your gross pay. The same case with SHAR from the gross pay. Uh, because with the tax amendment, we have uh, three allowable deductions now, NSSF, housing levy, and SHAR. So that for us to arrive at taxable pay, you would subtract the three of them. Then we can now calculate our pay. We also have the formula inside that. So it calculates our pay. We are talking of NSSF. We are talking of the shift or the share. We are talking of the housing, housing levy. Remember our NSSF, uh, we take we tax these on the we tax that on the, the scales. We have the upper limit and the lower limit, which we take 6%. This one, we take 2.75%, uh, but it has a limit of 300. Don't forget that. It has a limit of 300. This one, also, it, uh, we take 1.5%. Uh, 1.5%. Earlier, uh, earlier on, there was a relief. But now, due to this tax amendment, we don't have the relief. Due to this tax amendment, which it has now changed to allowable deduction, we don't have the relief on this. We don't have the relief on this. So, which means your payroll, your payroll will be named the basic pay, basic pay, right? Basic pay, uh, want, and then a person, and then we list this deduction. So, basic pay, so basic pay, maybe that 5,000, you less NSSF of uh, 21, 2160 or 21, uh, this one is 2100. If someone is earning that 5,000, he is going to pay 2100 and that come to the um, housing levy, which probably this is coming to around uh, 525 and then come to the share, share, which is coming to roughly 9, 965 there. So these are allowable deduction so if you subtract that you will get what is called taxable taxable pay you will get what is called or tax uh, taxable 
yes, taxable, taxable payables. Or from there, we will take that amount and then we subject into graduated scale. So once we have get this, we will subject into a graduated scale. So now that when now we come up with now automation of payroll, which we are going to use Excel. We are going to use Excel. Which are these formulas which you are going to use in Excel to automate our payroll? Number one, you have to understand the function called the if function. These are good functions. So we have to understand how to use the if function. We also need to understand how to use the VLOOKUP, the VLOOKUP function. We also need to understand how to use the VLOOKUP function. What else? We also need, because some Excel doesn't work with the VLOOKUP, then we introduce another function called the X lookup. We introduce another function called the X lookup, the X lookup. So with all this knowledge of Excel, with all this knowledge of Excel, we are going to code our Excel so that you can be able to compute our tax without the intervention or going back to the online to check uh, about this. Because I've seen, even though I've, I checked it yesterday and... Uh, I thank to the Winku. They have already uh, updated their website in terms of calculation of pay. Earlier on, they took a lot uh, took a lot of time to automate or to change their rate in their website. That's why most people end up amending their pay because of what uh, the introduction of SHA. There was no relief, but you find that those websites they add the relief. So this is what you are going to use to automate your your Excel. So you'll find that your Excel. We have done this in our payroll. We have a payroll which it does all these things without you struggling, without you struggling, without you struggling. So it is only you to understand this function. Once you have understand this, function you can be able even to redefine that payroll of ours into the payroll that it can suit your your purpose because the preparation of payroll is not the same um in all the organization the common thing which are the the basic is the basic pay the nssf housing uh, levy share and pay those are the common deduction or the elements of the payroll in each and every organization apart from those for the specific department so for if function how do we use this if function to automate your payroll a good example is uh this share the share the share has a limit as a limit of as a limit of 300 as a limit of 300 what does this mean the it has a limit of 300 which mean you cannot contribute because we are taking 2.7 percent but you cannot contribute less than 300 you cannot contribute less than 300 a good example is a person earning 5000 5000 times 2.75 how much is that 5000 times uh 2.75 let's take a calculator 2.75 times 5000 that one is coming uh we divide by 100 that one is coming to 137 one that 7.5 so if we take 2.7 pass uh 2.7 percent of this 5000 we are going to have a uh, one 137.5 so you can see this one is below the the set limit this one is below the set limit so we introduce the if function now we introduce the if function we will tell excel maybe uh let's uh, draw it i want to teach today excel on the board I don't want to go to my computer because if you go to the computer, people think that this thing is so difficult. So assuming this is our Excel column A, this is column A, row one. Eh? This is column A, row one. In this column A, row one, I have a basic of, uh, I have a basic or we have the name. Eh? Let's have the name K or J. And then we have column B, row one. Column B, row one so in this column b row one we have a basic of that five thousand we have a basic of that five thousand we have a basic of that five thousand so now we will use the if function to communicate with excel so we will come here maybe we want a share to be in a like d 
Yes, like D1 or uh, column D, row 1. So we'll tell Excel there, we come, we put equals if you close the bracket. And then you say, if this value, so you say now, if B1, if B1 is greater, than, if I take B1, if I take B1 and then multiply by, multiply by 2.75% and it will give me, or the value I'm getting here is more than 300. The value I'm getting there is more than 300. What do I need? You put a comma and tell Excel to take that value, which is B1 times 2.7%, uh, 2.7%. Or because we are communicating with Excel, this is the first option. You have told Excel, if I take this value, I multiply by 2.7%. And then if the value I'm getting here is more than the set limit, which is 300 shilling, then what do I need? Or the value, if it is true, if this value is true, you want Excel to do what? To take that value and multiply by 7.5%, 7.5%. Or another option is what about if this value is not true? I put a comma and say, if this value is not true, take for me, give me a set limit of 300. Give me a set limit of 300 and close the bracket. Close the bracket and click enter in your, in your keyboard. What are you getting? What are you getting? What are you getting? You are getting, you will have to get, uh, that is 962.5 something. That is the value. That is the value. So that is the one way of automating your payroll. That is one way of automating your payroll. So then uh, now for PE, for PE, we have to have the scale, the graduated scale here. But I'm not going to finish it, but I want to introduce that one to come in our next video, which we will introduce this, the graduated scale. And then we see how to subject this graduated scale. From there, we see how to automate our payroll also with the, the if function. But in a, mean, uh, in a meantime, we have automated payroll which it does all these things for you. It calculates your pay. It calculates your pay. It also calculates your NSSF. It also calculates your NSSF. All the deduction. It also prepare for you the P9 form. And also it prepare for you a pay slip. It prepare for you as a pay slip. Remember, it is a, a regulatory or a compulsory requirement that you should issue the pay slip to the employees and the the employer and the accountant and the company, they should sign or the director, they should, they should sign that payroll. So that in case this employee take you to the court, you have something to defend yourself on. So thank you and um, give a comment in that comment session and also like our video and also subscribe. So thank you so much for your time and for your patience. And this one we have just referenced to the our calculation in column E. So already it is there. And then uh, we have other deductions, maybe in your organization, it can be advances, loan, and other deductions. So this Excel is more adjustable. You can click here and insert a column and uh, adjust the formula. So at the end of it, you will find that we have the total pay here, which is summing all the deduction here. So once you have all the deduction, we subtract from the gross pay that is uh d4 minus o4 so that we can arrive at the net pay so that is the what is there in the current month so in this current month is where we will going you are calculating all your deduction and excel is doing that for you so you are not feeding anything in this worksheet you, the only thing which you will feed or you will put in this worksheet is if there is any other deduction but if there is no other deduction you are not putting anything a, a, an example let's add another employee in our database let's copy the same person and put as our second employee put as our second employee here let's come to the current month to see you can see we've already have two employees here and uh, so what i will need is just to drag my formula downward here I just need to drag my formula downward here. You can see, once you drag your formula downward, we are updating our, our net pay. We are getting negative values here because the share has a set limit of, uh, it has a set limit of, uh, of 300. But 
uh, if you don't want all these sheet you can delete this one because if you don't have more employees you can delete this one but if you have more than 50 employees then you will what you will need to do is just to select entire and then right click insert and then select your formula up to this point and then drag it downward to update the other side so you you will see so if you have more uh if you have more employees if you have more employees so it is a uh, something which is adjustable you can adjust to to fit your number of employees and then uh, once you fit all this information or once this information has been populated here it will be also populated in other worksheet like if you go to the KRA worksheet they will populate everything here so they will populate the name of the person the title the id number the KRA pin and also the amount of pay if you confirm our pay is 2815 year which let's check whether it is the same yes our pay year should also be the same this one we are getting uh let's see this one is or uh, this one we have to update our formula here so if i drag it down what you can see now uh this is uh the same so this is 427 which will be the same year also 427 so that is fine if you go to if you go to the share share also we should have the same amount i think i should update my payroll uh, i should drag my my formula downwards let, let me drag my formula downward so that we can have the same data so you can see here we have now